Hello and welcome to another episode of Ask the Experts. I'm Rachel Landry and today I'm joined by my colleague Jenna Nelson, who's an application specialist here at the company. Today, Jenna is going to be talking to us about using resampling methods in Global Mapper. All right, Jenna, take it away. Hi, everyone. Today, I will be showing you the new raster resampling methods available in Global Mapper 24.1. These include convolution filters such as sharpen, smooth, directional gradients, line and edge detection filters. There are features available in the base version of Global Mapper and an extra tool, new tool, in Global Mapper Pro. Let's get started. So I have some imagery loaded up in my Global Mapper workspace. And to access the filters, we'll double click on the layer and find the display tab in raster options. Here we have the resampling drop down menu with many of the options that have been available in previous versions. You'll notice that the kernel size is no longer here next to the name, but as soon as you choose your filter, you can then apply the kernel size after that. The new filters are down here under Gaussian Blur. Um, some of them also include kernel sizes. The kernel size will affect the amount of processing done, so obviously a larger kernel size will take into account more pixels and um, have a greater effect on the image. Now all of these filters are applied within the workspace. If you would like to export them, you can, but you'll have to apply the filter in the export process. So here we have our export dialog, and then you would find the drop down menu for the resampling. And all of the filters and kernel sizes are listed right there. Um, but as you may have noticed, you can only apply one filter at a time with this method. So if you're having to apply multiple filters, it could be tedious to have to export and re-import in order to apply the next filter. However, Global Mapper Pro has a new feature that makes this a lot quicker and easier. In the analysis menu, you can now find the apply convolution filter to layer button, which will launch a tool that produces a new layer as part of the output process. So here we can go in and choose our um, file that we're going to process and choose the filter. So for example, I'm going to choose a smoothing filter and then I'm going to apply um, an edge detection filter. So it's, it's often the case that you may want to use smoothing or noise removal um, or a blur to help remove the noise before you then apply one of the more feature enhancing um, filters. So I'm going to do a 5x5 five five smooth. And we'll notice the new layer is generated in the control center. I can then either use that same tool or I can just go into the raster options and apply my edge detection. I'm going to apply also a 5x5 five five kernel here as well. So here we have the grayscale image that shows the intensity of the edges. And just for contrast, I'm going to show you what this would have looked like if I hadn't applied that smoothing beforehand. So here's without the smoothing, and you can see there's a lot more um, noise and we don't clearly see the edges as well. And then there's after the smoothing. So you can see um, considerable difference there. Another feature of Pro is that you can actually input your own custom kernels. So I'm going to again go into analysis menu and launch the tool. This time I'm going to click new filter and this pop-up now allows me to input my own kernel values. So if you know of a filter that you'd like to use or if you want to be able to experiment with this, you can set your kernel size and input your own values. Um, in my case, I'm putting in some values that will give an embossed type of 
effect. Clicking OK. And again, we see a new layer is generated with the emboss. Um, it gives a little bit of depth to this image. So again, that was before and this is after. Finally, I should mention also that you can use this tool on elevation grids. So here I have a terrain layer. And in this case, I will show you some of those directional gradients. So let's look here at an area of the mountain. And let's apply a directional gradient. So I'm going to use the northeast. And this should highlight edges from that northeast direction. And then for contrast, I'm going to do the same thing, but from the northwest. You'll be able to see how these directional gradients highlight different features. So you can see here, the northwest, um, we get these large areas here that have been highlighted, whereas in the northeast, totally different features are standing out some of the more smaller um, roads and trails, especially. All right, if you have questions, be sure to check our knowledge base page on Apply Convolution Filter or write into us uh, with any questions that you have. Thanks for watching. Jenna, thank you so much for sharing that information with us. I know that our users will find it very important in their day-to-day -day workflows. To learn more about Global Mapper, please visit bluemarblegeo.com today. And as always, thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Ask the Experts, and we look forward to seeing you next time.